Hello, uh, once again, uh, let us continue with our discussion on the uh, soil survey and uh, classification. So in the previous topics, uh, we have been discussing on the different features of diagnostic horizon. So we made mention about the uh, surface horizon, which includes the molec, ombric, hestic, and uh, mm, we also discuss about the diagnostic subsurface horizons, which includes the the diagnostic features that can be observed in the B horizon. Uh, also some of it in the C horizons includes the cambic, the argilic, the natric, the uh, spudic, and oxic. There were many uh, diagnostic subsurface horizons and all those uh, knowledge on uh, diagnostic uh, horizons. So uh, it's needed on understanding of the uh, classifications of soil uh, which belongs to soil orders, okay. And today, so let us uh, continue with uh, our discussion on uh, soil taxonomy, particularly naming on uh, soils and classifying soils of different orders, suborders, grid groups, and groups and families. All right. So, so soil taxonomy. <clears throat> Slide Shimona. All right. So, soil taxonomy, there are uh, uh, six distinct categories where uh, soil are subdivided. So, based on its diagnostic characteristics, the one we have discussed uh, last time. Okay. And uh, so, there are uh, soils which are divided into six distinct categories based on diagnostic horizons. Example of the name of the soils based on uh, soil uh, taxonomy, we have the fine loamy mix, mesic aquic argiudos. This is an example of uh, the name or the uh, taxonomic classifications of the uh, soil. All right. So uh, this classification, uh, this name, has been based on the uh, different categories uh, by which the soil is being categorized. So example, the first category, we have soil order. Soil order has been a group, has been classified based on the presence or absence of diagnostic horizons. So we are trying to look into the different features in the uh, diagnostic horizons and what are those presence on in these uh, diagnostic horizons will eventually uh, calibrated or equated into what particular orders the soils are belongs. Okay, so we also have uh, some orders. And some orders has been categorized or uh, grouped the soils or subdivide soils or soil order based on the moisture and temperature. Okay, so previously we discussed about the different moisture and uh, soil temperature regime. Uh, within the the uh, critical uh, region of the soils. So the other uh, category, we have the grid groups. Okay, grid groups has been subdivided, suborder based on differences between soil horizons. So grid groups, and we also have subgroups. Okay, uh, subgroups integrates or integrates or transitional forms to other orders. Uh, Suborders or grid groups integrates or additional properties not common to grid group characteristic. So in the fifth uh, category, we have the family. Family uh, has been grouped based on particle size, mineralogy, temperature regime, and etc. And the last one which is the soil series. So uh, previously we made mention that series is the basic unit of uh, soil taxonomy or uh, soil classification. So soil series has been uh, grouped or uh, has been categorized based on the parent materials, kind, number, and arrangement of horizons in the profile. Okay, in plants and animals, uh, in plants, the in scientific names of plants and animals, we have the genus and the species, by which the species is the basic unit of uh, uh, classification in plants and animals. But in the soils, it is the series, which is the, the basic unit of uh, classification. So, uh, 
So I'd like you to memorize this one, no, this in, in order. So these five uh, groups, okay? If you can have, uh, what's this? Uh, acronym for this, you have an acronym uh, to help you memorize uh, this order, just do it. But uh, I, I would suggest that uh, the group, I would have uh, the same ac acronym for this so that uh, all of us have the same uh, understanding and the, uh, the same pattern of memorization. So I would suggest, so, okay. So there's an example, huh? okay. So this, uh, there is a name of the sewage. Huh? If the scientific name of plants and animals we thought as difficult, so more so is the name of uh, the soil because uh, the naming soils is a very uh, long no, as compared to naming plants and animals. This is the name. Example, you have the fine loamy mixed subarctic mystic aquic argiodos. Okay, so in the name itself, uh, we can uh, we can pick up uh, what particular uh, uh, features or characteristics the uh, the specific uh, soils has. For example, so the, the family, okay, is based on the mineralogy, okay, fine loamy. This is the soil texture, minerals. Then, then also the subgroup, the mesic, uh, which is the uh, the temperature regime, and the good group classified based on the uh, uh, this moisture regime, and subgroup must been classified based on diagnostic uh, subsurface horizon, which is the argillic or accumulation of clay. Then we have odic, we have uh, molecule order. So therefore, the formative elements OLL has been observed in this particular name of soils. Then this soils belongs to the order molecul because there is a, there is a, what's this? Uh, formative element in the uh, the name of the soil, which is the OLL, belongs to molecule. So this is a particular example of uh, names of uh, the soil. Soil. Okay, family. You know, the family based on uh, based on soil properties that affect management and root penetration, such as texture, temperature, mystic, no? and depth. So family is, the, is, is uh, in this particular samples defined based on uh, soil properties that affect uh, management and root penetration such as texture. When you say texture, we're talking about sand, silt, and clay, celtic clay, loamy, loamy fine sand. So we have the 12 different uh, textural category in the soils, but uh, we'll be discussing that later on. Okay, uh, based on temperature and depth of the soils. So this is how we name the soils and within the name of the soils, the name itself will tell us what is the uh, composition, the nature and properties of that particular soils for as long as we understand the different components of the names of the particular soils, this family, okay? So we have example in here in Lipaziris or the Plova Quintic Epiaqual. So when, we, uh, when we say Plova Quintic if we equal, so look at, look at this. So we have the formative element of OLL which belongs to molecule. Therefore, when the uh, when particular questions uh, would uh, call for an answer as to what particular soil order these uh, soils belong, so we have to look at the uh, the formative elements, the OLL which belongs to molecule. Okay, the same the family. Classified based on the minerals, no, a loamy or soil texture, and based on uh, soil temperature. Okay, this is family. Then the grid group. Then we have a uh, uh, subgroup and order molecule. Okay, uh, what usually uh, comes on the board exam is that uh, there is a given name of the particular soils. Then it calls for uh, it calls for what particular uh, soil order this soils belong, or maybe it calls for what particular uh, 
soil temperature region as this soils belong or maybe what particular uh, soil uh, temperature or moisture region this belong. Uh, in this particular soils, what temperature regimes it belongs, belongs to the mesic temperature regime. No? And what particular uh, soil moisture regime belong to the aquic moisture region because there is a word aquine here, okay? And the texture, uh, loamy, fine loamy mix. The order, molisol because of this OLL, okay? So that's how uh, we would able to identify the different properties of the specific names of the soils. So name from the town, this Lipa series, no? This Lipa series, name from the town or landscape features near where the soil was first recognized. So Lipa series is, uh, was first recognized in Lipa series, okay? So uh, based on the different diagnostic features, be it on the uh, uh, surface horizon or epipedon or in diagnostic subsurface horizon. So we have different uh, soil orders. We have antisols, we have insectisols. Yeah, antisols is, uh, this is young soils, insectisols. Uh, just uh, recently, I don't know, uh, kaka lang mag-decompose with insectisols. Andisols, they are volcanic, volcanic soils. Spudosols, are spudic, uh, mayroon siyang spudic uh, diagnostic subsurface horizons in uh, its uh, subsurface horizon. Molisols, mayroon siyang molic epipedon sa A horizon. Alphysols, these are uh, forested soils. No? And uh, altisols, oh, these are uh, soils rich in uh, iron and aluminum, uh, older than alphysols and oxysols, the oldest among all soil orders. No? Uh, this has been through a long period of bedding. Aridisols, these are soils in the arid regions, in the dry uh, region. Vertisols, okay, the, the uh, swelling and uh, shrinking types of uh, soils. Histosols, from the word histos, tissues. So these are organic soils, more than 20% uh, in its upper A horizon has been accumulated with more than 20% of organic matter, or partially decomposed organic matter, plant and animal debris. And the jelly soils, these are soils in the ice region, no? Okay. So as to the specific of these different orders, we have first entisol. Ang entisol, meron siyang formative element na ENT, okay? If meron given name ng soils, pag makita mo itong ENT on the last part of the name, which is ENT, then we would uh, consider that particular soils belongs to intisols. But, but what is intisols? Intisols, int, recent, no? Uh, recent soils. Uh, ibig sabihin, uh, bata pa, okay? Minimal development or little horizonization. This is young soils. So uh, very young soils with minimal development and little horizonization. Uh, look at, particularly in this picture, so if we, if we look out in here, so we can see only uh, two horizons in here, the A horizon as well as the C horizon. So no B horizon in this particular uh, soil orders because this is young soils. No? Uh, uh, you can only observe the E and C horizon or sometimes you can observe the A and the R horizon with only the Bidrak and the E horizon. EP actually, this is uh, E horizon that has been subjected to uh, uh, plowing because of human uh, activity like farming no? so na disturb na ang e horizon through plowing okay so there's another examples of intisols uh, look at in here the uh, intisols composed of a and r horizon walang c uh, so this is young soils e and r horizon so therefore intisols could be an e and c horizon or er horizon so in this particular example so, medyo, ah, hindi, bato pa talaga ito, no? Hindi pa nag-decompose. Hindi pa na-form or withered into a soils. So, kung mayroon mga soils dito, only present in A horizon, which is just a very thin layer of A horizon. So, a very young soils. So, this, uh, usually, we can observe ER or EC horizons in intisols because it is just a recently or just a... Uh, beginning to uh, decompose yung upper portion niya. So intisols characteristically have EC or ER horizon. 
sa iyang profiles, no? Exhibit only ephemeral soil development. When say ephemeral, so uh, very uh, young and just started to its development. Uh, largely confined to a uh, surface horizon. Okay. Uh, may have an EP or a plow layer A horizon. So that is an entisol. So another uh, soil order, we have the vertisol. Okay. The formative elements of the vertisol is ERT. So we have in here the aquert. So aquert, the last formative element is ERT, then the four aquerts belongs to soil order vertisol. Okay, this is a, an inverted soils with high clay, large shrink swell potential. It would uh, shrink uh, in during dry period. Uh, it would uh, swell and uh, possibly may have a landslide during uh, rainy seasons. It shrink in drought season and swell during the rainy season. Okay, gradually invert on themselves. It will change from cracking into swelling depending on the uh, on the uh, amount of water and temperature in the environment. So this is the vertisol. Okay. So we have here no example of the vertisol. So look at that. The soil cracks as characteristic of uh, vertisols and the uh, striking sides uh, by which the uh, soils would easily swell during uh, rainy seasons or when uh, saturated with water. Vertisol actually is not good for uh, construction because it will uh, bar down uh, when subjected to uh, high moisture content. Okay, another one we have inceptisol. So, so uh, try to uh, distinguish this one with uh, intisol. Now, this one is inceptisol. The formative element is EPT. So incept or inception meaning uh, just beginning. Okay, inception, soil shows the beginning of horizon development. So inception, I mean to say, nag-start na pag-develop ang kanyang horizon or little or no elevation. Uh, mayroong horizon, horizon uh, deposition in here has started but uh, walang depositions of clay or organic matter. So walang deposition because uh, it has just started its uh, development of the horizon. Uh, in this particular example, uh, we have an A horizon. Shall we say this one? Okay, this is uh, the A horizon. Pataas, uh, no? This is an A horizon dito. So, medyo manipis lang. Mayroon to yung B horizon from this portion. Ito. Uh, just follow the red lines that I have been outlining. So, yeah, this portion is the B horizon. Okay. And this one is the A horizon. It's thus A horizon. And the C horizon. So take note that uh, the boundaries between E and B is not that distinct. It is not that clear. So no clear boundary. And, uh, and so as with the B and the C horizon, because the horizon has just started, not fully developed yet. So this is septisol. okay? Another example of soil orders, we have the aridisols. This is, these are the soils from the arid region. It has a formative element of e ID, so ID. Okay, so arid regions of the world, arid soils, 19%, no? with less than 10 inches of rainfall usually contain carbonates. So an area where arid soils has been uh, present, it has usually a less than 10 inches of rainfall. So mababa lang in a year, no? and usually contains carbonates. In this particular example, I've already solved, so makita niyo mayroong uh, A horizon sa taas, but sa ilalim niyan, although mayroong, uh, mayroong kambik, uh, deposition of limestone, but rocks na ang sa ilalim, no? And these are rocks, no? Here. Uh, arid regions, okay? So, another example of arid, arid sol. So, look at in here. So A horizon, very thin yung A horizon. Kasi mahina, mababa lang ang, uh, ang withering doon sa arid region as compared to tropicals and other uh, wet humid, wet humid uh, region. So mayroong A, the, then B. Okay, mayroong mga depositions ng, ng limestone. No? Mayroong deposition. These are limestone. Then B drag. 
So those are already salts. So already salts has an accumulation of salts on the top or the surface soils or even in the subsurface soils. Why does it so? So uh, sodium chloride salts accumulates on the surface and in the subsurface of the soils because arid soils, these soils particularly found in the uh, arid regions. And arid regions, uh, there are very high the temperature, it's very hot, uh, so that the water from the soils will uh, raise up, evaporate, and the water will be uh, uh, transport to the atmosphere and while the water from the soils rise up it uh, brings with it some salts then the salts will be left at the surface of the soils that's why in this particular RD soil soils we, we would observe the uh, columnar structure which contain the sodium cup on top and this particular example look at this there are some white uh, color and the stuff of the surface soils. Actually, these are uh, sodium salts or salts that has been left after the water has been evaporated from the soil surface. Okay, that is, yes, that is the aridy salts. And then moly salts, soils with thick, dark, soft surface. So this is example, we have this thick, dark, I, I have to outline this one, this is the thick, dark, although the uh, dark in color is not that clear and very diffuse. Okay, these are the thick, white, ah no, thick, dark, soft surface. And this surface is known as the mulic. That's why if we can observe the mulic epipedons in the A horizon, then we would consider that particular soils belongs to the molecule horizon, uh, molecule suborder, okay? So, uh, so molecule soils with thick dark soft surface, molic plus cambic, mayroong uh, natric sodium de deposition, mayroong clay gen, and sometimes uh, walang deposition. And it has a high base saturation of so more than 50% base. Maraming calcium dito, maraming ma uh, magnesium, maraming potassium. So that is uh, some basic cations have been uh, deposited in this particular uh, uh, molic on this horizon. Okay, soils are, usually uh, molecules are the soils in the grasslands. Okay, example of that, we have the clarion typic haplodols. So take note the formative element OLL, which signifies that it, this belongs to the molecule because there is a formative element in the name. So OLL, okay. So another we have the spudosols, the formative element of spudosols, we have the OD. What is this, no? Spudosols is an acid sandy soils with thick, E and red uh, B its horizon. Uh, okay, so the E horizon is ito yung uh, ito yung uh, uh, white portion. No? Itong white portion na dito, ito, no? uh, This is the E horizon or the zone of removal. Kaya magiging white siya because some of its component has been uh, removed from that particular portions and drained down into the lower horizon, okay? That's pudic. So another we have uh, soil order alpisol with formative elements na alp. Example, we have the buralp. So mayroong formative element na alp sa last uh, na kanyang buralp na word. Then uh, these alpisols are fertile forested soils with ochreic and argilic. So mayroong ochreic uh, na uh, epipedons. Uh, so look at the uh, this layer in A horizon. Look at in A horizon. So medio medio lighter siya comparado on sa mulic. This is an ochreic. And with argilic, with argilic uh, we have the BT. There is an accumulations of uh, clay in here. Argilic, no clay BT or BT1, BT2 represent the clay or argilic accumulation. High base saturation, maraming calcium dito, uh, maraming basic cations in this particular uh, subsurface horizon. So this is uh, considered about 35% of the forested areas. So we have altisols. Okay, altisols actually uh, from the world, all, uh, ultimate. 
So malapit nang matapos ang parang near end no when we say ultimate ultisols ultisols these are also a very old uh, soils and the uh, formative element of this we have the alt okay so uh, ultisols soils more withered so more withered this has been through a long period of withering okay more highly withered na ito these are highly withered than albisols okay there is an oak creek uh, lighter so we try to look at the A horizon. So we try to look at the A horizon. This A horizon is uh, lighter than compared to a mulik. So medyo hindi siya dark compared to mulik. Then uh, there's an ochreic uh, epipedon in here. In argilic, there is a deposition of clay in the B horizon, the BT. This BT, there are some uh, clay that has been deposited in this uh, horizon, the BT or the accumulations of argilic. Low base saturation. So, uh, medyo acidic ng kunti ito. Uh, acidic talaga ito because uh, it has a low uh, base saturation of less than 35 degree, uh, ano, 35%. And uh, if a low, low base saturation of 35%, it must have at least, uh, ano, ano, yeah, uh, 65% acidic saturation. So this oil is old and acidic, rich in iron and uh, aluminum. So redder and more acid than alpisol, acidic ito. Okay? And histosols, from the word histos, are referring to tissues. So these are organic soils, no? These are organic soils. Soils derived from uh, the debris of uh, partially composed plants and animals. Uh, as opposed with the mineral soils. This soils is organic soils because it derived from the tissues of plants and animals. Okay, so the formative element is hist. Okay, so example of these histosols, we have pit soils, no? So yung mga uh, uh, undecomposed uh, or partially undecomposed materials on top or, or in the Horizons. In this particular uh, layer, look at I outline in here. So there is an organic uh, accumulations. In fact, up to this portion, these are all organic. Uh, these are soils not derived from rocks and minerals, but these soils are derived from uh, the debris of plants and animals. Anything that is organic. Okay. Okay. Uh, peat. We have undecomposed to highly decomposed organic matter in waterlogged areas, considered as histosols. Mucked highly decomposed organic matter is also belongs to the histosols. So whenever there are some depositions of these peat soils, peat and muck, and uh, which contain uh, up to more than 50 percent, uh, no, more than 20 percent. If there are uh, organic matter more than 20 percent on the E horizon that particular soils would be considered as belongs to the order histosol. Okay, we have andesols or the volcanic uh, soils. And the formative element is an and. Okay, what is this? Okay, soils from volcanic ejecta. Okay, example of volcanic ejecta, we have ash, cinder, pumice, basalt, a very light, low bulk density. So uh, that's why when we observe a volcanic eruption. So we have a problem of uh, sulfur ash and the different uh, ashes that's carried through uh, areas uh, where volcanic eruptions are located. All right. So uh, examples of andesols we have in here, the A horizon, look at this. The A horizon of the ash. Then we have the B horizon, the German piece, and the transition between B and C horizon. Then C horizons, all the rest. Uh, the low bulk density, density ibig sabihin, hindi ito compact, kundi uh, malambot na lupa ito. Uh, okay, and magaan. Uh, that is uh, volcanic uh, in origin. Early stage secondary minerals includes allophane, emogolite, rehydrite, and clays. High phosphorus fixing capacity. So when, when you apply phosphorus fertilizers in this particular soils, so we have a problem of phosphorus fixation by which the phosphorus is will not be available for plant roots absorption 
because the phosphorus that we will be applying on these soils will be converted into uh, rocks upon interaction with uh, uh, different components of uh, undisol soils. The other one is the oldest among uh, soil orders. We have oxisol. On the word oxides, uh, soils rich in oxides of iron and oxides of aluminum. Then the primitive elements, we have the ox, okay? Soils with oxic horizon, meaning to say there is a uh, accumulations of iron and uh, aluminum oxides on the diagnostic subsurface horizon. Very withered, so highly withered na ito. Uh, Swells of the tropics, no? this is the very withered soils of the tropics. So Philippines is a tropical country, so we have, um, uh, we can observe uh, many swells in the Philippines, such as uh, this one, okay? Low pH, mababa ang pH ito, the report is acidic, no? acid soils, high in 1 is to 1 clay minerals. So maraming kaolinite dito, no? uh, okay, we will discuss uh, later on about the different types of mineral, although I have mentioned that in passing during the soil formation, uh, withering and uh, rocks, no? our first topic, but we have to deal with that. Uh, Deeply on the succeeding uh, discussion. Okay, so kung titingnan niyo yung oxisol, parang wala ka nang makitang layer eh. Okay, because all the layers has been completely decomposed. That's why wala nang mga bato-bato dyan, decomposed na lahat. In fact, yung mga minerals dyan, yung mga calcium, magnesium, has been leached out already, has been percolated downward and uh, going into the uh, groundwater. So this is uh, very acidic soils, not fertile soils because uh, talagang tigulang na ito, no? mga matatanda na itong mga lupang ito. Okay? So pula sila or they are red because they are rich in iron. The which iron and aluminum responsible for the high acidity of these soils. Okay? So on the newest order, this has been incorporated or added into the... Uh, order of soils, the new order as of 1998, soils with uh, firmaprost. So these are soils that has been frozen by ice. No? Formerly, ang pangalan nito are uh, cryocrypts or frozen insecticides. Uh, look at that. Mayroon siyang organic uh, layer. Mayroong A horizon. Mayroong cambic and CF. These are the cryocrypts or frozen the frozen layer, merong ice dito, no? itong layer, layer na ito. That is gelisol. Okay, soils form in a cold climate, gelisol. No? Uh, the soil the temperature regimes of gelisols belong to pergelic temperature regime. <clears throat> uh, any plant material, it could be an organic, it could be uh, rocks. No? Often, uh, these materials transported through the action of ice, is known as the glacial drift or till, T-I-R-L-L. -L. It's another term na glacial deposit, till. So that's it. No? Uh, I hope to, uh, you gain some understanding uh, on the classifications of uh, soils and uh, how these soils has been classified, what are the basis of classifi classifying soils. As a sort of... Um, summary or synthesis. So uh, soil survey and classification, we discussed about uh, naming of soils, so taxonomy, and how important and what is the importance of naming soils and the purpose of naming soils. And uh, we made mention the different requirements when we are going to classify soils. In fact, uh, we study about the soil temperature regime, the soil moisture regime, though the some mineral mineralogy, the diagnostic sub surface horizons and the diagnostic epipedons. So all those uh, uh, requirements in classifying soils has been discussed in this uh, chapter. I hope uh, you gain some understanding for this. Uh, yes, uh, I will be uh, giving you some uh, discussions on the soil survey and classification. So by, by now, at least we have an understanding as to what is the soil survey and classification. Uh, thank you for uh, listening.